Welcome back to Africa This Morning. We are now on Table Talk and today we are going to be discussing leadership still. We are going to be featuring a lady who's taken up, who's taken up leadership right from where she's taking up business, which is fashion. And that's a very unique perspective, but we'll discuss that and who has been mentoring her to just campaign for positive and ethical leadership at that. This is Evelyn Odongo, who is there. She's the chief executive of Mefa Creations, right? Yes. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Welcome to Ebro Africa. Thank you. Let's start off with the platform of leadership and mentorship that has been offered to you, but that is through Elnet. Explain to the viewers what Elnet is so that we can better understand what are some of the platforms out there that are available when it comes to leadership. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, as you've all been told that my name is Evelyn. Um, LNET is a, an institution or organization that I came to know about last year. Um, I didn't know about it. And I think they were doing a research on, they believe that there are leaders in this nation who are good leaders. Mm -hmm. it, leaders who are ethical in whatever they're doing, whether it's business or personal lives. Uh, because there's a lot of focus in this nation on bad leadership. Or corruption, because you say what is killing our nation? The cancer that we have is and corruption. It's one of the yes, as a yes. Party. So, uh, Elnet came up with the the thought that is it really true that everybody in Kenya is corrupt? That there are no good leaders in this nation, which is not true. There are people who are doing the right thing at the right places where they are, where they are positioned. Uh, so they came up with a platform where they're able to look around and see who are the women in business and men in business, and even citizens, Kenya as a, as a nation. And uh, there are people out there who are doing the right thing. Um, so as they were going through their profiling last year, they're looking for people and companies to award. Um, someone did mention my name, because uh, I've been in the fashion business for the last, this is my 10th year doing fashion, and uh, we've always believed in doing the right thing from the beginning. Um, I've, I trusted God and I was so determined that whichever way or whichever level you're at in business or whatever profession you're at, you can always become a leader in that profession. So we made a decision as a company that we are going to do everything right. Sometimes you may not get it 100%, but you're determined to make sure that you do the right thing at the right time. So um, knowing the way my profession is, is, is tailoring or fashion and design, if, you, if somebody says you're a fashion designer or you're a tailor, however, whichever way someone wants to call you, the first thing they would ever think of is you're not straightforward. If you give me your fabric, then probably I'll, I'll steal part of mm -hmm. the fabric. Or if you give me six meters of your fabrics, I may just use a meter and never give you back the rest. Uh, are we paying our work as well? Are we doing the, uh, the government things that we're supposed to pay our taxes, do our NHIF, NSSF, all these things. Um, so we purpose that we're going to do things differently and stand to be counted. It's not an easy road because uh, when you're doing <laughs> the right thing, uh, I would say in this nation, it's not really normal. And that's actually what I wanted to inquire yeah. from you. How easy has it been for you to navigate around areas where people have been cutting corners very significantly and you come in and say I want to do things straight? I think depending also on, on where you're coming from or what you believe. For me I always believe that I'm a steward of what God has mm -hmm. put in me. It's not my, it's not something for me. Uh, I'm representing God where, where, I'm, where I'm working and, um, and I need to be a good steward of what the gifts God has given me. So I purposed, in fact <laughs> if, you, if you even the email that I send you I'm always believing that uh, Ecclesiastes 910, that's what I believe in. Whatsoever your hand findeth to do, yeah. do it with all your mind because where thou goest, there is no work. Uh, um, when we die, there'll be no work. So if you come to me to stitch for you an outfit today, I need to do it like I will never do it tomorrow. Because if I don't do it properly, then you will never come back or I will not serve you. And that's my, I always tell my clients, that is my pulpit. That's where I preach from. By stitching your outfit and doing it right, giving you it at this right time where I said I will give it to you. I mean, giving you the best service. That is what I'm there to do. Mm -hmm. So I think if all of us, whatever level you're working at, whether you're a carpenter, whether you're a sweeper, whether you're a cleaner, clean like you never cleaned before. And I think by doing that, I kept doing that for quite some time. Sometimes you feel like, oh my God, um, I'm, the mad, I'm the mad woman <laughs> around. Yeah. Um, because you do around, even in business, in terms of licenses. I remember when I was first opening my business, I just got in a small little office because I used to work from home before. 
And the first day I got to that office, I hadn't even settled down and city council came to me and they were asking me, Mama, where's your license? And I was like, I've just come in. And they told me, okay, we'll take you to our uh, place and um, we're gonna charge you. And I said, it's fine, I've just opened, I was just settling down, I haven't gotten the license, yes, I know I'm the wrong, but could you please give me time to go and so, because I haven't started transacting yet. They told me there's nothing like that unless you give, because so, I remember the vehicle was there and people are getting into that vehicle. Mm -hmm. And I told them, it's fine, I'm not gonna pay you anything, because they were trying to tell me, Evelyn, mm -hmm. you, mama, you can give us something small, then we let you go free. And I thought it about myself, I said, you know what, if I give you something today, you're the same people who will tell another person that that office doesn't have a license and they'll keep coming. So instead of taking my license of 12,000 shillings, I may end up paying 30, 40,000 at the end of the day. So I purpose and said, you know what, I'm going to go the extra mile, I'll go to your courts and be charged, then I'll have my license by tomorrow. And um, since I didn't have any money with me, I had to go and organize for the cash. They told me, okay, who do we go? I said, you can't go with me now because I have to go and sort the money. So could you please go with my tailor? So they actually took my tailor into the car. And um, of course they were picking so many people in the vehicle and they went to the city council uh, court. By the time they were driving, my tailor called me and told me, hey boss, uh, everybody has left the car, I'm the only one left. Why? Because the, everybody else has given something small, so he's the only one left. So they're trying to tell him, please call your boss and tell your boss to, to do something so yeah. that we also release you. But I said, no, I'm not going to do that. And how, during this time, yeah. you have a tailor who's already been, in, in a sense, incarcerated. Yeah. And you have workers as well who you're hoping to recruit. How are you getting people on the same bandwagon of ethical leadership? Even as you had one, you still <laughs> was wondering, yeah. really? really? Yeah. 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 I know that time he's feeling like, oh my goodness. <laughs> just do What's it. wrong with you? Just yeah. do it. Yeah. I mean, what's wrong with you? Just everybody's doing it. So why are you the one not yeah. to just, he couldn't understand. And he, he we actually went and he was taken, we were charged and we paid, I think it was 6,000 bob mm -hmm. or something like that. And once we paid it, I paid the, the money, we got him out, and I went and got my license. And there are so many other events that I've also gone through, like mm -hmm. even car parking. Sometimes you get the city council parking. They're, they're not, the, the areas that they've come to outside town, I didn't know that it's a city council. Sometimes you never know it's a city council area because it's on outside town. And again, you get held or give some, you know, you say, no, I can't give. And people around lo look at you like, is this woman mad? <laughs> Why don't you just give and let it be quick? So it's not been easy even to have employees or people who are um, ethical, but we try to make sure that they understand what, what, where we are coming from and what we are standing for. What are the key factors you look at, one, when it comes to recruiting those who are going to be working with you, even as you're creating a circle around you, but you have to create a circle around you that echoes your principles of leadership? <sighs> that has been a journey. Yeah. It, it has been a journey. Um, and um, it has quite been challenging. Uh, when it comes to uh, like the tailors that I employ, sometimes you get a tailor who for the longest time they've ever stitched, they've never done their NHIF, NSSF, uh, pay as you earn. And they're coming to a place where all these things need to be done. So because the person sees, if, if you're paying me 20,000 or 30,000, why are you taking my pay as you earn? Why are you taking, they don't really understand. And I don't blame them because they haven't done that before, so they really don't need to understand. So I do a lot of training. I call people that I work with. Uh, there are a number of organizations that I work with that come and train my people so that they're able to understand. And sometimes you find that people are just at the moment they're saying, no, I'm not going to allow my salary to be reduced, NHIF, NSSF. But I'm telling you, NHIF is for your own benefit. NSSF is for your own benefit as well, because as I deduct your NSSF, I'm also as an employer adding to your NSSF. So it's a value for you. So all these things, I think it's a part of education and it's upon us to educate the people around us so that they are able to do the right thing at the right time. It's not an easy road to travel. And for a long time I did that at some point, I'm like, really God, is it really worth it? Uh, everywhere you go, people are cutting corners. You go to buy a fabric somewhere, somebody wants to, the, the shop t attendant wants to tell you, oh, let any kwangeze come at So it's just all over. And how do you stand as a person? So last year when Elnet actually, someone proposed me uh, as, as someone to be assessed and to be awarded, I was in shock uh, because it was quite um, exposing because they had to interview, I think, your competitors, <laughs> which is the hardest thing. So uh, you give a list of your competitors to be interviewed, your family, uh, your suppliers, your bankers. It was quite a rigorous kind of a, um, assessment. So you're feeling like you're, you're being 
you're being open and naked, rubble. you know, you and rubble, because yeah. every, you, even your husband would be asked, I mean, very intimate questions. Uh, your children will be asked, what kind of a mother is she? Does she, <laughs> does she do whatever she needs to do? The clans, but do you think she's, um, it, it's quite... Does she stick to the book? Does she stick says. to the book? Is she corrupt? Uh, is she paying the work as well? Is she, very intricate questions. Yeah. And, and it was like opening your life to people. And also I said, let me just give it a try because um, nothing will hurt me. If, if there's anything negative, I'll be able to know. To learn from to it. To learn from the yeah. to, to a negative person. What am I able to improve as a business? If there are things that are positive, then we continue doing the positive things. And um, it was amazing after a long period of time when I was called and, and briefed and told that, you know, you're among the, uh, I think we are a number of companies that they had, it's listed with four companies, and uh, that I was among the, the companies that were, uh, were going to be awarded, and we had met the, the percentage that they needed. I was in shock. And uh, just to also see the results and what clients were saying and suppliers and all these things, and that everybody talks almost the same about you. It, it's, it's such an amazing, in fact, I always joke that actually I've had my urology before I died. <laughs> it was quite um, interesting. And that encouraged me to say, you know what, whatever I've been, it takes a long time. You may not be celebrated as you do all these things, but I think somebody somewhere is watching what you're doing.